having impressions taken at the dentist. First, we're going to show a bite registration being taken. This is something they will take either before or after your alginate impressions. This is when they have you bite down tight and take a mold of your occlusion, which is how your top and bottom teeth bite together. This helps the lab see how your top and bottom teeth match. So here you can see this is one way to take a bite registration. There are different materials that can be used. Some offices may use a flat piece of wax that they have you bite on, and some offices may use the material that was just shown here in the video. After the bite registration is taken, they will then check to see which size tray fits best for you to take the impression. They'll need one tray for the top and one tray for the bottom. Also, say you're having impressions taken for a night guard. Lots of people ask why they would need a top and bottom mold when the night guard will only be for the top. The reason is because the lab needs to see how your top and bottom teeth match to fabricate a properly fitted night guard, which relates back to the first step you just saw where they took the bite registration. So anyway, now it's time to take the impression. The dental provider started mixing the powder with the water, and once that happens, it's go time. The impression material here is called alginate, and this mixture usually sets pretty fast because it's the fast setting one. So when they start mixing it, this is the best time to start breathing through your nose and relaxing if you're nervous about gagging. It truly helps if you breathe through your nose and even wiggle your toes. I actually have a whole video on tips and tricks on how to not gag while taking x-rays at the dentist. And you can actually use that same exact video and use the techniques in that video if you're getting impressions taken. So I can link that video below if you want to watch it for those tips. But back to this video. Here, the first impression that's about to be taken is of the top teeth, the maxillary arch. And so they're piling it on there, putting all the material into the tray. And then once it's filled, the dental provider will place the tray into the patient's mouth and they will hold it the whole time and keep checking to see when it's set. Usually takes about a few minutes. It's really quick, but it can feel like forever because it's super cumbersome in your mouth. The dental provider does know when it's time to remove it from your mouth because they keep feeling it, like I said, and they know when it's ready because the material no longer feels like squishy. It, it becomes more firm, lack of better words, but that's really, they're just feeling for the correct consistency. Once it's time to remove it, they will take it out and it might feel and sound like a suction being removed from your mouth. It's just kind of what it's like. Again, this whole thing is super straightforward and easy. It's just some people feel a little gaggy during it because it sometimes touches the back of your throat. Having said that, some people have no problem at all. Again, relaxation techniques are key. Next, they will clean you up a little and get you ready for the second impression, in this case, the bottom, which is the mandibular teeth, the mandibular arch. They will mix the powder and water up again, just like they did for the top, and then they will add it to the tray, and once the tray is filled, they will again put it into your mouth and repeat the same process again, just on your bottom teeth now. So like I said, same thing. They will hold it in your mouth the whole time, continue to feel the material until it changes consistency, and once it's ready again, they will remove it. And now you get super cleaned up and they'll probably offer you water or something to remove any residual pieces of alginate material that could have fell and be been left over in your mouth. Now, after the impressions are taken, the appointment is usually over for the patient. They are dismissed and they're able to make their next appointment for the delivery of whatever dental appliance or restoration is being made from the model that was just taken. This next step happens in the lab behind the scenes once the patient is gone, but I'll still show you if you're interested. Now, there's lots of different ways and different techniques. People prefer to do this part depending on what they learned in school or on the job or through experience, but depending on the clinician's consistency preference, they will make a mixture of stone and water. The impression is held on top of a dental vibrator or a dental agitator, which helps the stone spread throughout the impression and flow the mix into a mold. It also helps the clinician get rid of any bubbles because the goal is to not have any bubbles because that can ruin the model. I'll turn on the audio for a second here so you can hear what it really sounds like when this step is being done. Lastly, 
after the base is made, they allow it to sit and cool off, and then the impression will be separated later from the model and trimmed and sent out to the dental lab where the night guard or whitening tray or crown or denture or whatever is being made can get made from this model. And the dental lab will then send it back to our dental office and the patient will return on another day to receive their new appliance that was made from the model. I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe if it did. If you want to learn more about teeth, visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com for more videos and articles. And until next time, peace, love, and teeth.